I'm going to start by showing you some code. Who recognizes this? It means you're old enough, like me. All right. Well, go good job. Only three of you. Oh, my God. That's bad. All right. <laughs> All right. For those of you who don't, this is COBOL. All right. And this is a transaction call. And I'm going to make this bold claim. This is an API call. Right? Um, basically, for the, I've been working for 20 plus years, and I've seen a lot of different technologies going on. I used actually to work for IBM for about 19 years, 17 years, sorry. Uh, and um, this is the kind of first stuff I came with too. So why am I showing you this? Because I go to all those conferences and talking to people, and they seem like they think that they have invented APIs. They have not, right? That's been there forever. An application programming interface has been there forever. So why do we need an API? We need an API to call something. In that case, this is a transaction, right? And it has a name, and it has an input, and it has an output, right? Pretty much, you call something, you pass it some data, and it returns something to you. That's pretty much an API. Now, that was about 40x years ago when this was created, and it's still running in probably many of your mainframes and in your banks and everywhere, right? Now, what has changed in the past 40 years? The, what we've seen basically evolving is where those APIs are. And basically, the evolution I've seen over the 20 plus years I've been working is that the APIs are moving to the edge of the network, pretty much. Right? And, and what used to be a company where everything was integrated, where you had a big, massive enterprise, and basically all that what you needed was within the enterprise, what we're seeing this evolving towards is something completely exploded. Right? Uh, you, you will have to integrate all kinds of systems, internally and externally, and the best way to do that is to just rely on an API to actually do this, either for your own conception, for your partners, for your customers. That hasn't changed as a principle. What is, is changing, really, is how you expose that information. And I think also how easier this integration has been uh, over the years, right? We started with things like this, right? And code that has evolved through SOAP and web services. Now it's all about REST. What, you know, God knows what comes uh, next, you know? Just to make sure that that integration between all those components is becoming l more and more frictionless. It makes it really easy to integrate all those systems. If you've seen this, uh, the presentation this gentleman from, uh, from West did, right? If you see, like, the integration they've done with IVR and SMS, et cetera, et cetera, the only way they can make all of that happen is because everything is exposed as APIs and they use those things. It's the same thing, uh, you know, that, uh, that we, we see in, in many and in, in most of our customers today. So we're evolving through those companies that become those all the little pieces that have to be integrated internally and externally. Now, to be able to do that, what does that require, right? If you look at that picture, you turn it around again, you're going to see the architecture picture that uh, Andy has shown in his presentation about the different layers when he showed all the different products, right? What you, you have some services. So I'm not going to get into the debate of microservices versus services and SOA and all that stuff. There's a nice gentleman coming right after me who's going to talk to you about microservices and how they implemented this with the API manager in their company. So I'll let him do that. But imagine we have some kind of functionality. You know, from my original COBOL thing, this is basically my CICS, my Kix transaction. Today, it can be some program written in Java or in .NET or in Go and whatever it is. It can run its own container. It can be in a full-blown application server. doesn't really matter, right? But you have all that stuff that so you need to integrate with it. Um, maybe you have something in the middle that does all the integration between the different parts of the company. This is another interesting battle today on the, on the market between is ESB dead or not? Have you seen that happening, right? So uh, a lot of uh, vendors now trying to move you away from ESBs and say only APIs are cool. Uh, we tend not to agree with that statement. Basically, it's all about you know, what is that, what you need for your requirements. And maybe, yes, you don't need an ESB in the middle, or you don't need some service orchestration. Maybe you do. You know, it's all about 
whether you know you actually need it or not. It's not about dac dating, just saying that's it. You don't need it. Period, right? So what we see is those APIs that you have, which are at the edge of your network, which allow you to integrate with your all your internal systems. They can go straight into those services or microservices, or they can go through a central middleware and through, go through an ESB. You can do all of that with our platform, right? Now, when you have those APIs, what is important is the management side of it. So if APIs are not new, what has evolved a lot in the past two or three years is the management side of it. So it's not so much about APIs, it's about management, when you talk about API management. So what does it mean to have a managed API? So you have this thing on the edge of the network, uh, basically, that allows you to integrate internally, externally, with your partners, with your customers, with Jodo somewhere because you're exploiting some public API, you have no idea basically who is using it. I mean, you have no idea who is about to use it. You don't know who that user is. It can be anybody, right? So security and access control is very important, and, and Prabhat later is going to explain all the different patterns in terms of API security that you can actually use and are important in, in that context, right? So the management side of things is about APIs uh, being secured, and also a very key important point, and, and uh, Michael Terry did, a, I think, a great job this morning about the entire analytics and, and, and knowing the customer, right? One of the key things about APIs and API management in general is they're at the edge of the network, and basically, should you be in the services, should you be in a microservices environment, is one thing everybody agrees about, is you need that layer of API to basically have all the transactions and all the calls go through it. What this means is you have a unique point of entry in your architecture where you can see all the traffic going through, and that will enable you to capture all that information, capture all that data, and make some intelligence out of it. Right? And that intelligence can be technical intelligence, like how many times did anybody do a transaction today, right? Or it can be really completely uh, much more advanced intelligence in terms of, well, to, you know, I've had this customer and they came back three times today and they've done like three transactions of this amount of, in, of, um, of money, for example, from three different places, or something like going on in there, something really wrong, and then you get into using that data for those predictive analytics, for this real-time streaming information, um, data information analysis that uh, Mike was talking about, right? So this is your entry point that allows you to capture all that information. So that's kind of the high-level picture that we draw in terms of architecture, and you will see here that it says external application, but it also says internal applications. So the other thing we've seen with our customers over you know, the, the past four years, I've been with the BSO2, but I've seen that before as well, is you really have to use, as, as this gentleman from Google was saying, you have to use your own APIs. If you're creating APIs to services, don't reserve them just for external interactions, right? Use them yourselves. It allows you to actually refine them in terms of how they work. APIs are not something static. They're going to evolve over time. And the best way to test them and know they're working is actually to use them yourselves, right? And it also will, you will benefit from all this management and monitoring and security for your own application. So what we've seen a lot of our customers do is actually start with that, right? A lot of the API movement is talking about open APIs and public APIs, but what we've seen most of our customers do is start with private APIs, start with internal APIs, and then take a subset of that, or the whole set of it, depending on their business and what they want to do, and make them public in the sense of external, it can be public access, open to, to all, it can be reserved to some partners, it depends, right? But one of the key recommendations is really don't, don't do a backdoor, right? Don't allow people to go straight into the services without going through the API layer. Protect in your architecture from that, so you, you keep that management, basically, in terms also for your internal applications. That, that's one of the, the key things we've, we've seen. Now, 
If you look at, at that picture, right, what it means is that the APIs are really just the tip of the iceberg. Right? So, so if you hear a message that tells you do APIs in your old set, I would really strongly advise that you, you, know, you think about that statement for a while because really it's just the entry point into the system. You have a whole load of things happening behind it that you need to take care of. And it's not because you have just created an API that you're done, right? So that is why we have not, well, we have an API management product, of course, but most importantly, we have an API management platform, right? Which allows you to cover that entire story I was talking about. So if we, if we go from the core, so if you look at the, the color code here, like darkest green is like the core offering of our API management. And as you go outside, it becomes more and more like optional, I would say, and add-ons on top of, of the platform. So the, the first core thing is, well, you need what we call portals. Or in, in the API management space, very much it's called a developer's portal. Um, so a place where people can go and one internally for you to publish those APIs, to set what they say what they are, put some uh, documentation. That's very important. Don't publish APIs with no documentation. You're going to get into problems. People need to understand how they work. And when I'm saying documentation, it's not only about text. It's also about being able to interact with that API so people understand very quickly you know, what this API is all about. So that's kind of the core functionality, the ability to publish your APIs and for consumer to come and find them, right? So we have a, a, a core concept here, which is an, what we call an API store, uh, much like uh, an app store, as you, you would know for your applications that you install on your phone. Um, that of, another you know, lesson learned from, from all the customers that we are working with is um, I'll give you an example from a customer I talked to in, in Spain. They were telling me, uh, Isabel, we have 6,000 APIs. This is a massive platform uh, for hotels reservation. I will not tell you the name, but basically they have behind the scenes of every hotel reservation system you use on the internet that you may have heard about. 6,000 APIs. So basically, when a new partner wants to come on board, uh, it takes them today two months to just give them an API key, right? And in front of them, they have a competitor who has made a lot of progress already on all of this, and they have a public API store, and it takes five minutes, right? So basically, their key problem today is they know their product is better, their platform is better, but their issue is if, you know, people have no patience anymore. Developers, they have to go and find an API that makes a hotel reservation, they'll just go and find whatever works, right? They have no patience to wait for two months for an API key. They can't afford that. They have some deadlines and stuff. That doesn't work, right? So it needs to be really easy to find what they're looking for, very quickly decide this is what they need and it does what they want, uh, have all the information that they need, limit, uh, you know, it's all about self-service, right? Limit the amount of interaction with a call center or help center that they need to actually get started and bootstrap their project. And once they've done all that, then they'll just call you and say, hey, okay, I like your stuff. Uh, now I would like to, you know, basically have a, a deeper relationship with your company. One of our customers uh, actually here in the U.S. is pretty much what they do. They let you log in, come in, you can play as long as kind of pretty much in, in read mode. But if you want to go in a more advanced relationship with a company and start you know, publishing through the APIs, then you will have to call them and they'll have to verify who you are, et cetera, et cetera, right? So that, that core part of portals is really important. Of course, security. So basic security about key management, right? I was talking about API keys. Why do we need an API key? To simply authenticate and, and, and understand who is the person calling me. So you can limit the number of calls they want to do. You can basically track who they are, track what they're doing. It allows you to basically have some basic control over who they are. So that's kind of a key feature of any API management platform. Uh, of course, you need a gateway. So basically, th that's the part of, in my picture that stands in front of all the rest of the, of the architecture. This is where all the calls come in and basically are being routed to the right 
services behind the scenes or microservices or ESB, whatever it is that you have behind the scenes, your API layer. So Sanjeeva was saying this morning, we're releasing a new uh, gateway, uh, basically, which why are we doing this? Well, the, Sanjeeva explained the evolution, but one of the key requirements we got really from our customers is, is really the scale of the number of calls that they need. Uh, and we're talking about 15, 20,000 requests per second. And, and you really need to have uh, you know, a server that can scale uh, to that level and, and much further than that, right? And in a very low latency, that's a very also important part. So just a few milliseconds within that gateway and you're gone, right? So that, that's also a key point um, in terms of the API gateway. You may do some transformation there, you may do some checks, you may do some basic things, but if you have to do some heavy work on those APIs, this is where our architects and myself would recommend that you look at the middleware and ESB and the further layer to actually do that. And metadata, of course, so that's all the information about the APIs themselves. So that's kind of the core offering. Around that, very important, the analytics. Uh, uh, every time I talk to a customer, I'll tell them, you know, please, please make sure you put the analytics in place from the beginning. If you deploy APIs and you have zero visibility into what's going on into the system, you're really going to have to, you know, you're going to be in trouble. You need to be able to know, you know, how many calls are going through those things, which API is more successful than another. Is it version two versus version one? Um, who are my like prime customers? All of those questions you can answer to, like all those basic questions, and you can do much more advanced things with your data, with your specific data for your APIs, right? Managing the transactions and such. But at least being able to understand the behavior, that I would start with that. Then you can, you know, bring and, and build on top of that to put a predictive side, maybe machine learning as time goes, but just make sure you enable your APIs to be monitored, you know, right from the beginning of your API management project. That's why, you know, uh, Sanjeev also was saying this morning, uh, we're really, we, was something we've done in the latest version of the API manager is just to make sure you have basically one button to click, tell it where uh, the analytics engine is, and it will automatically start talking to it and publishing data to it. So make it very easy to configure the integration between the two parts of the platform. And finally, around it, so um, I'll let Prabhat explain in, in more details here, but um, the core is, is API keys in terms of security, but we've seen a lot of requests from customers, first for social logins, right? So I don't want customers, we're back to that self-service and making it very easy for a customer to onboard your API portal. Well, I don't want to log in onto your portal, I don't want to set up yet another user ID password. Let me use my Facebook, LinkedIn, Yahoo, whatever it is that I have, Gmail account, to actually log into this. Use a social login instead of an another new one, right? Um, more advanced authorization, right? So for example, well, you know, Isabel can call that API, right, but not on the weekends. There's no reason I'm using an application here on the weekends that calls those APIs. So you want to verify who I am and see if I am entitled to actually call this API or if I'm not, right? Uh, faded identity, so integration, and of course single sign-on of your portal with maybe the rest of applications within your enterprise. Or with, uh, as Sanjeeva was mentioning this morning, that's what we do internally. So we have um, basically single sign-on, which is single sign-on onto, in our case, is, is uh, Google Mail. Once you're logged in, then you can get into our internal API store, app store, using those credentials, right? So that's something you can do with the platform as well. Um, enterprise governance, that's also a key thing. So of course, those API is about governing them, is about governing their lifecycle, their versions. Um, so, so API, as I said, is just one part of the whole story. So what a customer wants really to do is to say, OK, so that API really is calling that service or those two or three services. Those APIs are used in projects A, B, and C by uh, those people who are the project managers, right? You want to have an holistic view of basically your governance. So you can say, for example, if that service implementation is being delayed, then that project is gonna be impacted because I know I have the relationship 
between all of those pieces within my governance story, and I know who is depending on what, right? So this is kind of another level, but it, it proved, uh, and some of our customers here, uh, to be something extremely valuable to them, to have a single place where they can see absolutely every single asset within their company. And finally, integration, so we talked about that, which is like if the API gateway, uh, we recommend from an architecture point of view, really, to keep the work you're doing at the gateway level to basically to routing, to maybe some basic transformation. I'm saying basic transformation, it can be like rest to soap, or soap to rest, these kind of things. But if you start to have to do massive like data transformation on the message formats, talking through adapters to backend systems, et cetera, et cetera, from an architecture point of view, really, you shouldn't do that at the gateway level, right? It also is easier if you have those two layers to scale the gateway layer from the integration layer separately, because the workload on those two is going to be pretty different, OK? So as soon as you go above like basic routing scenarios in terms of gateway and, of course, enforcing the security and catching all the monitoring information, and then think about from an architecture point of view and putting another integration layer uh, after that. All right, so we kind of talked about all this. Um, just one uh, key thing that I would talk about um, is um, in terms of API design. So you can either, uh, so we've, we've made a, um, a strategic, basically, decision within WSO2 to, to use Swagger as the um, language for the API descriptions and documentation. So that's what we're using over, all over the place now uh, with Swagger 2.0, working uh, closely with SmartBear on this as well, since they took over the project. So you can either start from existing services which have a Swagger annotation and import it. You can start from scratch and do the reverse using all the Swagger tooling in terms of API design. Documentation, as I said, is extremely important, right? Don't, you know, as I always say, show developers some love, right? The developers you have in front of you who are going to consume those APIs. And this is, again, true internally and externally. Well, you can't hate your internal developers and love the external ones. You have to love all of them, right? So you, you really need to show and give them all the information they need, and they're going to thank you for it because they're not going to call you to understand how this whole stuff is working. So invest into the documentation. It's really important, OK? Uh, talked about most of the things. So self-service, we talked about. Uh, just one last key word on, on the monitoring and analytics. Uh, so we give some out-of-the-box dashboards for you when it comes with API Manager. It will show you some technical and, and, and more like business-oriented information about the behavior of your APIs. But the key advantage for you is that you can extend that functionality, right? So there's so much information we can give you, which is generic, basically. But then depending on your APIs, what we allow you to do is just say, okay, I want to capture all that information related to that API call push that into the same statistics engine, and write my own statistic role and show them in the same dashboard. But those are mine, right? And, and there's no way we can pre-write that for you, because it obviously all depends on the API that you're writing. But you can merge the out of the box with your own extensions. Now, where are you going to install this? Well, as you do for any WSO2 product, you download, you install, it runs. Um, Windows, Linux, AI, Solaris, right? It's also, as, as customers told you this morning, they were looking for a cloud-ready option. So one of the key characteristics of the underlying carbon um, platform is that it's cloud-ready, uh, which means it can scale and install on the cloud environment. We also have, I don't know if you guys have heard about this, an option called Manage Cloud. So this is... Some, this is about taking, you know, you basically not being interested in managing the solution. You just want to basically concentrate on the business of deploying the APIs or a solution around your API management uh, requirements. But you don't want to take care about, you know, installing the product and managing it and make sure it runs 24-7 and with a certain level of... Uh, of um, availability, et cetera. So you just basically delegate that to us. So what we will do is we will install the products for you. We'll just manage it for you. 
um, on basically that runs on, on Amazon platform. So we'll run an Amazon platform for you uh, at the level of uh, requirements that you need. Um, so that's basically a fee on top of the product um, support fee. And the other option is public cloud. So this is basically about subscribing, going on a cloud, doing API cloud subscription, and having a SaaS version of our API management. So uh, I just have um, put some here um, so that you have a better idea of what to choose, uh, some of the different options. Uh, really, the, the key difference is going to be by at the pricing level uh, in terms uh, of the different uh, systems here. So the cloud, of course, is by usage and, and not by JVM, unless you you install on, on JVM. Uh, for those of you who are new for, to WSO2, the pricing is based on the actual number of servers that you deploy. That's what I mean by JVM. Um, analytics are included in the manage options, are optional if you buy it. And upgrades are all, that's the advantage of the cloud option, are managed for you when they're manual if you're handling it. It's kind of logical. Um, to finish, I just would like to tell you what drives um, basically the roadmap. So that's my, back to my job, which is product management. Um, th th what are the key requirements that our customers are asking for? As I said, the first one is scalability and, num and, and basically low latency. So the, the as the number of APIs increases and integration through API is basically exploding, the number of transactions that you have to handle at platform is actually by, by the order of thousands of, of, of transactions per second. So that's one of the first thing, and that's one of the key reasons we made us that move to that new uh, gateway to evolve around this. This unified governance, so making sure we have a single place where you can see all our assets. Uh, extended security beyond the keys. Um, one of the key things that has been told today as well is there is already an architecture in place. There are already systems in place. And the ability to integrate with all those pieces of your architecture is one of the key drivers as well. We had a lot of customers asking us to support third-party gateways. So we have our own gateway, but we have many customers that have bought other solutions that don't have the governance aspects, that don't have the security aspects, and they ask us to basically integrate with their existing gateways. So we've done some changes in the past version to basically decouple um, some of the, the key management as well and the gateway part to make sure you can actually plug and play your own key management and your own gateway within the product. As I said, uh, also all the understanding the API value, which is all about analytics. Internet of Things, so I haven't said IoT yet since the beginning of the talk. Uh, I've said microservices, which is all the buzzword, but, <laughs> right? So, but IoT, if you want to interact through uh, with a device, you're going to have to do this through an API as well. So there are some key scenarios here that we have to support with the platform. And in general, like, uh, there's been a lot of talk this morning about consumer experience, and, and, and in our world, it's like user experience. So what is your experience with the product, and what is the experience of your customers who are going to use the stores and developer portals with our product? So there's a lot of emphasis on that as well. Thank you very much.